I'm Ludovico Stevens. I'm technical marketing engineer, and I'm specialized on the Extremes Fabric Solution. Uh, I have my laptop here, which is connected to my fabric switch. And my fabric switch is connected to my appliance here, and my appliance has the internet WAN connection. I can factory default this switch, and it takes a couple of minutes, but uh, the nice thing is that when this switch comes back, you'll see that it will rejoin the fabric automatically. I don't have to configure anything. The whole solution basically is zero touch. So if I'm deploying a new site, so if, if we're a new site here in this deployment in, in Berlin, the deployment for me is I would deploy both the appliance and the fabric switch, and they would automatically configure themselves without me having to do, I wouldn't have to do anything via the serial port. There's no manual configuration. It's all zero touch. So this laptop here has got, I do have a serial port into the switch, but not because I'm going to configure stuff. It's just to see what happens when the switch comes up. And I also am receiving here a little video stream. And this video stream comes from the Reading Hub location. So uh, when I factory default this switch, you'll see the video will stop. And then we're going to have to wait a few minutes to see uh, before it, it, it resumes automatically. So this screen here represents my local laptop here in Berlin. And this screen here is my orchestration, which is which is accessing the resources from Reading. So from Reading, I can, I can SSH uh, into my fabric switch in Reading. And I can see here that I've got a number of fabric uh, adjacencies to all the remote sites. So this is my hub site, and I have an adjacency to this switch here in Berlin, and I have adjacencies to Singapore, France, and, and, and the US. And I can also SSH from Reading, I can SSH into this switch here in Berlin. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to do the necessary commands, if I can recall them. So I'm going to do these commands here, which are going to factory default my switch. So it's basically a factory default my switch, and I reset it. And what you'll see is that the video here is frozen, because I've lost connectivity. And the serial port here is showing me that the switch is now rebooting. I've lost links on my ports, because this fabric switch is now down. And so this is going to take now a couple of minutes to come back. But what we, in the meantime, what we can do is we can go in back. If I go back to the Reading switch, you'll see here that the one which was highlighted in red, that adjacency has gone away because I've, I've killed the switch. So as far as we're concerned, the fabric basically doesn't see the site any longer. Our fabric switch is progressing through its boot cycle. And right now, it's, uh, we're getting close. So I don't know if you can zoom into the, uh, the serial port here, but it's... Um, uh, at some point, we're going to see some messages and we will see some ISIS adjacencies come up magically because I haven't configured them. <laughs> so right now we see that uh, LLDP adjacency on port 124, which is where the appliance is connected. The switch right now is trying to, is running IQ agent to connect into XIQ. Okay, fair enough. We see the cold start trap. It'll just be a few moments and we should start seeing ISIS adjacencies come up. And the nice thing of this is that it's not just um, uh, auto-configuring the fabric over the SD-WAN, but all the other common uh, pr um, onboarding processes like Zero Touch Fabric and ZTP Plus onboarding into XIQ Site Engine and IQ Agent onboarding into Cloud, they will all work as if this switch was locally connected to a local fabric. So the fact that we're running over SD-WAN doesn't change anything to that. So you see here some messages, adjacency up. And look at the video, the video started on its own. Basically the switch is back in operation and we did absolutely nothing to configure it. And there's quite substantial configuration which was pushed to the device. So if you have time, I will take you through and see what that configuration is. Um, so what we can do is uh, we can go back to the SSH session here. This is the session where I had factory defaulted the switch. Uh, in the meantime, the switch will have also got a, a DHCP IP address from Reading. So I should be able to SSH back into the same switch again. I can but I defaulted the switch, so it's pushing me. I need a new SSH key. I need to accept that key to connect via SSH. And I just have to bear with me to, to, to reconnect. So it's, it's a factory defaulted switch, so I need to confirm what the default passwords are gonna be for this switch. And there we go. So I'm back on the same switch as before. And what we'll just look at is we'll look at the LLDP neighbor of this switch. So we can see that it has an LLDP neighbor on port 24. That is my SD-WAN appliance. And if you are uh, interested in the nitty gritty details, which I usually am, uh, we can actually go and look at the uh, LDP neighbor, the detail information that we're getting on that port 124. So you actually get to see what, um, what the, uh, the SD-WAN appliance 
what information the SD1 appliance is pushing to the switch. It's basically telling the switch, use this IP address, this is your default gateway, and you need to build VXLAN tunnels to this destination, and I've only got one destination here, but I, it could actually provide me multiple tunnel destinations. So the switch will take this information, and what it does is it creates a VRF dynamically, which is called AutoSense FE, it's VRF1. In this VRF, it's gonna create the IP address it was told to create. In the routing table of this VRF, it will create a default route to the gateway, which is the SD1 appliance. And then it will build a VXLAN tunnel for Fabric Extend to the Reading, to the IP address of the uh, Fabric switch behind the appliance in Reading. And in this tunnel, it basically runs ISIS. Now, the beauty of this is I didn't have to configure any of this, which is quite a lot of configuration if you had to do it manually. And to prove that, I will look at the running config for ISIS, and you'll see that there is basically nothing because it's all dynamically derived.